That would be Ethan, Min Jun, and Hyun Jun if you're ready to present on multiple sclerosis. Yeah, I think we're ready. Okay, you guys can share your screen then. Thank you guys. Multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a presumably immune-mediated, demyelinating, and neurodegenerative disease of human central nervous system, which usually affects young adults and causes significant irreversible neurological disability. Maybe up to 85% of newly diagnosed multiple sclerosis patients have relapsing emitting disease, which is characterized by periods of development of new or worsening of older neurological deficits followed by complete or partial improvements. And in most cases, MS manifests between the ages of 20 and 40 with a peak age of 29 and females being predominantly affected, at least in the most common form of MS. And also MS lesions develop in various areas of the brain and spinal cord, which in turn lead to the development of a wide array of clinical manifestations. So in this picture, you can see the demyelinating of neurons. So demyelinating of neurons can cause MS. Now I will talk about symptoms of MS. There are very many symptoms in MS and it usually depends on the site of MS lesions, which is demyelinating. And vision problems are often one of the first signs of MS. First, in vision problems, maybe optic neuritis is most common problems. So optic nerve is an extension of the brain within the orbit and is commonly affected by MS. And optic neuritis leads to blur blurriness and pain in one eye. And also color perception and contrast sensitivity are comprised and patients report significant decrease in light intensity perception. And in very recent study, they say the optic disc appears swollen in 35% of the patients and normal in 65%. And MS can also cause motor problems like weakness. So patients describe their weakness as heaviness, stiffness, or giving way under their weight of their extremities. And there are also sensory problems like numbness, pins and needle sensation, Dysesthetic pain, tingling, and burning are most common. So these sensory presentations may be more indicative of the demyelination of the posterior columns than spinal thalamic tract. And in case of psychiatric problems, about 20 to 40% of patients with MS present with personality changes characterized by irritability and apathy. And also bipolar disorder, pseudobu Bulbal effects, euphoria, and anxiety are also overrepresented in patients with MS. Now, I will tell you how we can diagnose MS. But most important, important part of this diagnosing is there are no specific tests for MS. Instead, a diagnosis of MS often relies on ruling out other conditions that might produce similar signs and symptoms. And this kind of diagnosis can be called as differential diagnosis. So we can use spinal tap and MRI and evoked potential test. So in MRI case, it's really, that it's really easy to understand. So we can reveal the MS lesions in our CNS. And in spinal tap, it can be called as lumbar, lumbar puncture. So it removes small sample of CSF, which is cerebral spinal fluid from the spinal cord canal and it can show abnormalities in antibodies that are associated with MS. So I want to know you guys that MS is autoimmune disease so abnormalities is in antibodies happens and evoked potential test is common test for MS so it records the electrical signals produced by nervous system in response to stimuli and maybe the visual stimuli and electrical stimuli are using. 
and watch a uh, moving visual pattern or short electrical impulses are applied to nerves in your legs or arms and electrodes measure how quickly the information travels down your nerve pathway. So this graph shows you how we can do evoked potential test. And I will explain very briefly about treatments because Minjun will tell us more. We can have three kinds of treatments for MS attacks and to modify progression and for MS size and symptoms. So for treatments for MS attacks, we can use corticosteroids and plasma exchange. And for treatments to modify progression, we can use injectable or oral or infusion treatments. And for treatments for MS signs and symptoms, we can use physical therapy and muscle relaxants and medications to increase walking speed. Now I will tell you three interesting facts about MS. First, I want to tell you about is many patients with MS may have ischemic stroke. So M and I will call ischemic stroke as IS, like MS. So MS and IS are two major neurological diseases with motor sensory disabilities, cognitive impairments, and mental disorders. So many researchers interested in genetic etiology shared by MS and IS. So researchers performed flexible gene-based analysis to discover significant shared genes between MS and IS and analyze their differential expression. So the study examining shared genes that have changes in MS and IS found significant genes such as FOXP1 and CAMK2G and CLEC2D, LBH and SLC2A4RG. So these genes are mainly participate in cell development and immune response, and both are associated with MS and IS. And this can show that there may be many common connections between causes of MS and IS. So this research indicates new directions for future studies examining mechanisms and new therapeutic options. So next interesting fact is Vitamin D may lower your risk of MS. Since MS is considered an autoimmune disease, we need to think potential effects of vitamin D related to immune functions. So the active form of vitamin D plays an essential role in lymphocyte activation and proliferation and T helper cell differentiation, tissue specific lymphocyte homing, the produce production of specific antibody isotypes and regulation of the immune response. And these researchers did many studies and many data reveals that identification and correction of vitamin D insufficiency with supplementation at recommended doses is a sensible cl clinical target to reduce MS symptoms and attacks. So another recent study found that vitamin D may help repair myelin of nerves that MS damages. A third in interesting fact of MS is the pregnancy may help MS recover. In most cases, MS happens between the ages of 20 and 40 with a peak age of 29. So pregnancy rates are high who are diagnosed MS. So MS diagnosis does not increase rates of premature or stillbirth, birth defects, caesarean delivery or spontaneous abortions. And uh, estrogens and other sex hormones which increase when pregnancy activate immunological transformation during pregnancy by shifting T helper cells to mostly TH2, which acts which have effect as anti-inflammatory, instead of TH1, which have effect of pro-inflammatory. So while after the delivery immunomodulation is reversed, so pregnancy may help MS recover. But the majority of drugs registered to treat MS are not compatible with pregnancy. So women with a severe risk of disease reactivation would benefit from the continuation of treatments with drug named natalizumab. Only natalizumab drug is compatible with this pregnancy. Okay, so 
The exact cause of MS isn't known, but we do know that there are many factors uh, involved. So first, the immune system. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune, dis autoimmune disease where the immune cells attack cells in the central nervous system. So what happens is the T cells in your immune system become confused when they see a nerve cell, mistaking it for an invader. And specifically, T cells think that the MOBP protein on oligodendrocytes are formed. They will then alert B cells and macrophages, which start attacking the oligodendrocytes. This damages the myelin sheath, causing problems with communication between the brain and the body. And there are two pictures on the side if, yeah. So here is a T cell uh, alerting B cells and macrophages to attack the myelin sheath. So the second factor is infectious diseases. Some viruses that attack your body may look like neurons to the immune system. So the immune system in response to this will develop specialized cells called T cells to fight off the virus. Those T cells remain in your body after an infection is gone and they may become confused when they recognize a nerve cell <clears throat> and think it is foreign. This will cause them to alert other immune cells which start attacking the nerve, damaging and destroying the myelin sheath. And it's also possible that early exposure to Epstein-Barr virus may play a role in MS, but researchers aren't sure. <coughs> so the third factor is genetics. Certain genetic combinations can increase the chance of developing MS. Um, HLA genes, but especially the HLA DRB1-1501 variant is strongly linked. Uh, the HLA DRB1 gene is part of a family of genes called the human leukocyte antigen complex or HLA complex. The HLA complex helps the immune system distinguish the body's own proteins from proteins made by foreign invaders, such as viruses and bacteria. But however, it is unclear exactly what role HLA DRB1 gene variants play in the development of multiple sclerosis. And this means that your chance of developing MS will increase if you have relatives with MS, since you may share certain genes. But this does not mean that multiple sclerosis is a genetic disease. So the final factor is lifestyle. If you have a high salt diet, obesity, and a regular habit of smoking, these can all increase your risk of developing multiple sclerosis. So in total, symptoms of multiple sclerosis occur because T cells begin to attack the oligodendrocytes uh, from a combination of factors. Uh, as I went over above. And this leads to oligodendrocytes dying by inflammatory and immune attacks, causing apoptosis of neurons. This leads to demyelination in neurons in the CNS, which eventually lead to symptoms of multiple sclerosis. So there are basically about two ways to stop autoimmune disease, diseases involving faulty cells from entering brain tissue through hyperpermeable blood-brain barriers. And that is one, we can reduce the rate of immune reductions in our brain, or two, we can prevent those cells from entering the BBB in the first place. And if you focus on the first pers perspective of possible treatments, immunosuppressants can play major roles in addressing the fatal symptoms of autoimmune diseases, including multiple sclerosis. Since MS is a disease that involves faulty T cells slipping into a hyperpermeable blood brain barrier, then we can say that the myelinating effects caused by those T cells can be greatly reduced. If we reduce the portion of naughty T cells in, in that brain cell, while also reducing the re release and effect of cytokines that will be secreted by those T cells. And one drug that works as an immunosuppressant also, the only FDA-approved MS-treating drug as of now is acrelizumab. 
So this is an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody that controls multiple sclerosis by targeting, binding, and eventually ne negating CD20 markers on B cells. Therefore, this will suppress the activity of B cells in the brain, making it an immunosuppressant. This was one of the first attempts to use immunosuppressants in a medical treatment, so that they decided to call this as a first-in-class medication. This drug is administered by intravenous infusion and relaxing and remitting for multiple sclerosis to treat fatal symptoms such as clinically isolated symptoms and active secondary progressive disease. Again, relapsing and remitting disease has some 80% ratio of the total number of multiple sclerosis patients, and it's also very periodic and slow compared to other forms of MS. Because of these characteristics, the disease is not, also not quite easy to spot in its early active periods, thus frequently underdiagnosed. Other than ocrelizumab, some other efforts have been made to address this disease too, such as BIB, BIIB003. I'll just call this BIB. BIB033 is also a monoclonal antibody drug like ocrelizumab. And this, in turn, tar targets the leucine rich repeat and immunoglobin like domain containing protein 1, or we just abbreviate that to lingo 1. This also disables a proportion of the B cells in the immune system, and this can also treat optic neurite neuritis, which is also a symptom that was related to the optic tract in multiple sclerosis. The company Biogen iTech proved successfully on its phase two test on July 2020, I remember. I'm not sure about this one. And it is waiting for FDA approval. Uh, and there is a kind of drug called disease modifying drugs. These are also a type of immunosuppressants and does not refer to a specific type of drug. This is also specifically used for design, design for use on relapsing and mutating types of multiple sclerosis patients. Now think about it, to address this type of MS, we need to shorten relapse periods and extend remitting periods. Disease modifying drugs does do just this. Corticosteroids or steroid hormones are secreted from the adrenal cortex during incidents of stress, which can either influence salt and water balance using electrolyte balance and fluid balance, mineral corticoids do this, or regulate glucose metabolism using glucocorticosteroids. This hormone also has an effect on the immune system that reduces inflammation. The two drugs listed below, gladiramer acetate and beta interference, will be introduced in great detail in the following slides. Glamour acetate, also known as copolymer 1 or copaxon, complete, competitively binds with the myelin antigen to the major histocompatibility complex of antigen presenting cells during maturation of T cells. Antigen presenting cells chain a T cell to attack in the presence of the myelin antigen during, during maturation. They present the myelin antigen in the MHC complexes and make those immature helper T cells into type 1 helper T cells, also called Th1. These cells produce interleukins 1 and 2 and gamma interferons and tumor necrosis factor beta and alpha, which is a type of cytokine. This can induce a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction on myelinated, myelinated axons in the brain, leading to pro-inflammation, like Hyung just said before. Glatoramer acetate will bind to this MHC complex during T-cell training, which will then train the majority of immature T-cells to respond to glatoramer acetate because the MHC complex has a much higher affinity for glamour acetate than the myelin antigen. These, these T cells will become type 2 helper cells or Th2 cells that can suppress immune responses in the brain. Glatoramer acetate will also secrete substances that protect the nervous system itself. Now for the T cell to slip inside the blood brain barrier, VLA4 transmembrane protein in the T cell needs to bind and interact with a blood blood-brain barrier epithelial cell membrane protein called VCAM. Beta interferons can suppress immune responses in a variety of ways, such as binding to separate receptors on T cells that non-competitively in inhibit VLA4 binding to VCAM, while also isolating VCAM itself from the BV epithelium. It can also inhibit the release and action of cytokines, including tumor necrosis factors alpha and beta, which was, as you've seen before, secreted by falsely trained type 1 helper cells. Now, these are our citations, and thank you for listening. If you have any questions, we'll be pleased to answer them. Thank you. Wow, that was really, really awesome. I like how you guys, you guys all went into a lot of, of detail, which is, which is great. Um, a lot of research into the immune system as well. 
So you guys probably uh, understand why um, I was talking about different um, cell types for you guys. You see, it's all about um, like, if you guys who are researching as well, like for schizophrenia and other projects, you might see like the MHC region and now these are HLA genes. And this is all about like how the T cells are recognizing certain um, molecules that are on other cells and then getting activated to do their job. Um, and we can see the, the connectedness, interconnectedness between the immune system and um, the brain, which is, it's, this is a really, really neat project, guys. Um, so re really good job, guys. Really great team effort as well. Um, so um, does anybody else have any questions on multiple sclerosis? If not, then once again, really, really great job, guys. So up next.